Hi there. DeepMind has just released a new AI that learns an intuitive model of physics by watching simulated environments. And then they test this internal model of the AI by showing it possible and impossible videos. The videos contain the concepts of unchangeableness, directional inertia, continuity, object persistence, and solidity. For a human, it's very easy to differentiate what is possible and what's impossible in these video clips. So on the left side, you see a possible environment, and on the right side, you see something that's impossible. But it's very interesting how an AI can learn the difference between these two concepts. These five concepts that DeepMind used to evaluate the AI were actually taken from developmental psychology for young children. So young children develop an understanding of these five concepts like unchangeability or directional inertia. Psychologists know that the child has an understanding of a concept by measuring the surprise of the child. For example, if an object seems to teleport to space, infants pay a lot more attention to it. That means they will look at the object that teleports a lot more than at an object that follows their expectation. Now let's have a look inside of the paper to figure out how Plato actually works. Plato consists out of a perception module and a dynamics module. The perception module embeds the input video into a latent space. And this latent space then contains a representation of the scene. The dynamics module then receives a buffer of the past and current representations of the state and tries to predict the next state based on that. So the perception module internally consists out of an autoencoder. Now you might know or not know what an autoencoder is. Basically, an autoencoder gets an input X and wants to predict the exact same output X. Now you might ask yourself, what's the point of predicting the same exact thing? The idea is that the autoencoder internally has to compress the information. So in the center of the autoencoder, it has very, very small space for the information. So the input image is much larger than the encoding that it has to learn in the center. So the autoencoder consists out of an encoder and a decoder. The encoder gets the large image and then compresses this into a small encoding. And then this encoding gets decompressed by the decoder into the original image. It has to create a very compressed representation internally. And there are people who think that intelligence itself is a lot about compression of information. And instead of just taking in the picture, you just have a very compressed internal representation of what that picture represents, what it means. And this, in this case, the representation consists out of one vector for each of the objects. And it is trained for each object separately. And as an input, it only receives the mask of an object. And it receives only the part of the video that this mask does not cover. So if there's a ball in the scene, we'll only see the ball itself, only the cutout of the scene, and then the size of the mask. So it doesn't see the entire scene. And this is done for each of the objects. So in the training, you need to have the masks. Now, they also describe a way to automatically learn the segmentation without any ground truth data. But in this case, the simulation just gives them, gives them these masks for each of the objects, which makes it a bit more simple. Now, with this representation, so we have n vector for each of the objects in the scene. We then use the dynamics model based on that, and we have an, a buffer of all the previous time steps and the current time step. And then the dynamics model uses this and then makes a new prediction of the representation. And then this representation, we can feed it into the decoder of the autoencoder. Then we will get the image of what the model thinks will happen in the next scene. Now, in order to understand whether the model actually learned an understanding of the scenes, they came up with the surprise metric in which they showed the model impossible scenes and then they showed how much the prediction of the model differed from the actual ground truth of the situation. Now in the surprise metric, for each time step on each object, they look at the 
representation that the model created and predicted, and they look at the ground truth representation, and then they compare how much the output of the decoder of these representations differ for each of the objects each time step. They showed that their model can recognize all of the five intuitive physics aspects that they were looking for, at least with some accuracy better than 0.5, but at the same time the results are not super strong. As a baseline comparison, they created two other models that did not learn a representation for each object, but they learned a flat representation. One of them had an equal amount of parameters, but a smaller latent space, so a smaller representation for the scene. The other one had the same size of a latent space, the same size of the representation, but had more parameters, more compute. And both of these baseline models performed worse than the model they used, Plato, which had one representation for each object. Now, what's the conclusion from here? I think that the model they use is very simple and the results are not that strong, but I think the data set is very interesting. They released this data set publicly and it's an interesting way to look at how AI can understand the world by showing it the intuitive physics concepts that we all understand as humans. It should be interesting to look at more complex models and more complex scenarios, the more scaled up. And in the future, this could help AI understand scenes better. So what do you think about this?